Today, I'm gonna to break down some of the Asana terms so that if you're brand new to the tool and still finding your bearings, you can understand what you're looking at. Or if you are evaluating Asana and potentially switching over from another tool like Smartsheet or ClickUp or Monday, um, you can get a really good understanding of how the features compare so you know exactly what you're looking at. But if this is your first time here, my name is Marquis Murray. I am the CEO at Surface and a proud Asana partner. And I make videos like this every single week. And so if you're returning and you've loved the videos that you've seen, I'd love it. If you could subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and if you're finding value from this leave a comment ask a question share this with a friend so that we can reach more people just like you all right so let's get into the demo so i've actually got 12 uh, terms that I want to discuss today, everything from projects to tasks to sections, so you can understand exactly what you're looking at and exactly what they mean, so you can make sure that Asana is the best tool for you and your team. So the first thing we're going to look at is projects. So here we have a project, and a project is really just a list, a run-on list of tasks. Uh, typically the rule of thumb is if you have more than 10 tasks, or you need to collaborate with multiple people, and there are various stages that the project has to go through before being completed, you would create a project. This is the best place for you and your team to collaborate within a project. You can do so many things. You can assign tasks and due dates. You can have dashboards. You can use Gantt charts and have different views. But the project is where all of the work happens. Next, I want to talk to you about tasks. So again, within every project, they're all made up of tasks. And so a task is simply one of these lines here. You can simply go and create a new task like so, and when you go into the task detail view, you'll see that you can add an assignee, you can add a due date, you can upload attachments, you can copy the link here, you can like this task, you can, uh, in the description, add information, you, know, you can format that information, you can record videos, um, add in charts and videos and hyperlinks, you can do a lot within these tasks. And then of course, the most important thing around tasks is being able to communicate and at mentioning people to keep the conversation going. And again, keep all that work in the same place. The third one I'm gonna show you are subtasks. And so within a task, you can have um, another layer of tasks that are embedded within that parent task. And so under subtask, you can have tasks that are related or maybe things you wanna check off. So if you are coming from Trello or ClickUp, I think these are called uh, just simply checklists or lists. The terminology in Asana is subtask. So the, again, you can group all that related information. So if this task was um, by groceries, right? Maybe this is a grocery list. That's not how you spell groceries at all. Um, there we go. Maybe your your subtasks or your, your checklist are the things that you're gonna buy. So tomatoes, um, there we go. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna buy uh, milk, eggs. Uh, yeah, we're making an omelet, I guess, and maybe some cheese, right? So, and then you, you have the ability to assign these and add due dates as well, and then you can check them off as you go. The third thing I want to talk about are sections. Now, in some tools, they call these swim lanes, stages. Um, if you're on a Kanban board, it would be um, just like a stage or a status that you're at. And so sections are simply these headers right here. And as you can see, I can collapse them. And within each section is where you would group uh, types of tasks. So in this case, we have an on tour Dublin event. This is an event that we're planning and you can see that these sections are times, you know, before the event actually kicks off where we need to complete things. So all of these tasks within the pre-event week 11 section would need to be completed within week 11. Um, if you're working um, in another type of project, you could have a section that's simply a to-do uh, in progress. These are my favorite because they're just so simple. Um, and then you can have one that says done. And what's nice is you can apply rules and automation to each of these sections so the task can automatically move through them. Um, if you were using form submissions, you can have a form automatically submit into a specific section. Um, if you're building any rules, you can say, hey, when a task gets to this section, do all of these things. So sections are really powerful um, in addition to allowing you to 
um, organize your different tasks. Next, we're gonna talk about custom fields. And so you can see them right here. Custom fields are all of these little columns that we see here. So often here, uh, people that are new to the platform call these columns um, or, or properties, right? So these are custom fields. You have the ability to click on uh, either that plus sign or we can go to customize and we can click on fields here and you can see the fields that are already in this project or you can go to add and create your own new custom field. What's nice about these is you have a library you can choose from of custom fields that you have created for your organization or you can create a new one. And we have various different types of custom fields. Single select, multi-select, date, people, text, where if you have a, a URL, you can put it in the text and it will create a hyperlink for you. You can add notes there as well. You can use numbers and you can add dollar values and percentages. You can add formulas here as well, basic formulas, advanced formulas as well. Or you can have uh, unique identifiers as your custom field as well. So these custom fields can be applied to one single project or you can use the multi-homing feature, which is where one instance of a task lives in multiple projects. And those two projects can have different custom fields different sections, different automations, but you still are using that custom field on both cases to identify the certain status of a task. Many different use cases, but that is the, the long and the short of custom fields. And I always say that custom fields are similar to sections, right? You, you can add them wherever you want, so you can call them whatever you want. And if you want to get into more advanced automation and rule building and workflow building in Asana, then custom fields are the, are the best way to do that because you can use them as triggers to trigger actions. If you have custom fields in your project, you can then pull that into reports and dashboards to get information. And so it's not only a way to tag, uh, it's a way to visually see what's going on at a high level. And it's also a way to get deeper automation and insight through reports in any of your projects or portfolios throughout your entire Asana instance. Next, we're gonna talk about milestones. So milestones are exactly that. They're, they're a task um, with, with some added functionality. So with the milestone, we can take any task, just take this one, decide whether PMM will assist with speaker. If you right click on that task, you can mark as milestone. You can also go into the task click on the three dots right here and go mark as milestone. So what this allows you to do is if you are adding um, projects to a portfolio or if you are tracking goals and you're using an automatic promotion, when a task is completed or a milestone is completed, you can then see you know, in the portfolio, and I'll get there in a second, what milestones have been completed. The thing about milestones are they occupy one single date. There is no start date or end date on milestones. You have one single date, whereas on a, on a task, you can add a start date and then an end date, okay? So if you were looking at this on a timeline, but you'd be able to see all of the milestones um, because they're marked by that little triangle shape. There we go. So we can see our tasks right here. We can change the duration of those tasks. The milestone, we don't have the option to change the duration, but you can slip it around in time as well. So I've moved it from an overdue status in the past to an on track status in the future and it, it's changed to green in that case. The next feature or term I want to talk to you about are dependencies and so it's actually nice that we're at the timeline view right now. Dependencies are how you can create connections between parent tasks, dependent tasks, porting tasks, however you want. Um, dependencies are a great way to do that in Asana. So there's a couple ways to do it. Either in the task detail view, you can click on add dependency and say if I want to make sure workshop number one needs to be completed before we can start on host workshop number two, right? I would simply click in there and so change the other way around because right now it's going to show that this task is blocked by, meaning I can't complete this task until I complete um, the second task. So I'm going to change this to blocking, all right? And so let's just back out a second. We'll go to the list view here for a minute. And let's see if I can find where those tasks are my project. There we go. So here's host workshop number one. And as you can see, I've created a dependency where it's blocking our host workshop number two right there. And I'm not able to click on it or complete it. It says it's waiting on task one. So that's one of the real simple and quick ways to do it. If we did go back 
to the timeline and slip back here, um, we have the ability, let's stretch this out a little bit. We can move this as well, where we can uh, let's create another dependency. You hover over a task in the timeline or the Gantt view, you'll see these little nodes pop up on the end and we can simply click and drag to the task that we want to create that dependency between. And what's nice about this is we have a few options. We can have finish to start, we can have finish to finish, start to start, or start to finish. And so it really helps us to, you know, create the, the connections within our timelines and our, and our Gantt charts. If we wanted to identify the critical path, this is also a great way to do that through dependencies. And so that's what it looks like on the Asana side. Next, I want to talk to you about rules. So Asana calls them rules. Anywhere else, you're going to hear them just simply as automation. So we know when we hear rules, we're talking about automations on the platform. And so when we go back to our list view, we can go to customize and then we can go to rules right here and we can see the rules that are already in this project. Rules allow you to move tasks through sections, allow you to notify people when a task gets to a certain stage. If a status is changed, so if I were to change this all brand, all branding customer relationships to workshop, for example, I could create a rule that when that happens, I can create a subtask, I can assign something to someone else, I can then add this task and multi-home it to another project. There's so much that you can do with rules. Um, but let's just go in and create one simple rule. And what's nice is if you're getting started with rules, Asana's gone ahead and given you lots of pre-built options here. So simply when a task is added to this project, I'm just gonna click this quick rule here. So task is added to this project, we want to add collaborators. So anytime a task comes in, maybe we want people to be informed of that. So we would just add them as a collaborator here. Oh, same person. Let's publish that rule. I always like to just name these as well. Task added to project add collaborators. Yeah, that's pretty, it's a pretty good definition. And so now let's just add a new task like so. And the rule is running as you can see, running one rule, and then it's added those people as collaborators automatically. So we can do so many different things, add comments, like I said, but uh, that's what automations look like on the platform. All right, next I wanna go to portfolios. I love portfolios because what it allows you to do is take a step back and group like projects in one space where you can see a high level status, all of those projects, you can see the timeline of all those projects, you can see the owners of those projects. If you're tracking budgets, you can see all of that information in one succinct uh, view, it's really nice. So um, I will say that in order to access portfolios, you have to at least be on the advanced plan of Asana. If you're on starter or the free plan, you're not going to have access to portfolios. And so we can click on portfolio and we can create that portfolio. I'm just going to call this test portfolio. And then we're going to continue and go in and start adding some some projects. So now we can add work to it so we can start visualizing how our work is doing. So I'm going to do on tour because I feel like I had a few of those. Add another one on tour again. I'm just going to add these four. We'll speed this. There we go. So now I can see all of those different projects for this on tour campaign that we're running. Right. I have the ability to create a status update for this as well. Let's just add that one in there really quickly so we can see this project is on track, right? We can see the task progress. This is based on the number of tasks that have been completed. And like I said earlier, if you choose milestones, you can then track your milestones. You can see the due date of those projects. You can assign um, priorities to those and you can see the owners. And like we did at the project level, you can also add custom fields that you can view at the portfolio. And what I love about the portfolio custom fields is you can add what are called roll up custom fields. So if you are estimating time or doing percentage allocation or again managing budgets, you can have a field that is shared across all of these different projects. And then you can see those costs rolled up here as well. So portfolios is really powerful because we have all of our, our timelines assigned for our projects, we can then see everything on a uh, timeline as well to see exactly when those projects start and, and where we may be able to take on some more work. 
Then we can get dashboards here where we can see a summary of all of the relevant information that we want within uh, those within those projects as well. Uh, there's so many other things we can get into here, but that's not the video for today. But portfolios is so powerful. If you want to capture any workload or capacity for your team, this is a fantastic way to do it. All right, next I want to talk to you, and this is we'll wrap it up. I think I've got three more to talk to you about. So um, dashboards, so we have the ability to look at various dashboards. So what Asana does in every project or portfolio, it loads up what it feels to be the most commonly visualized or required metrics, right? How many completed tasks are there? What are the total tasks? How many of them are overdue? And so we have a dashboard here where we can see all of the relevant information. If we wanted to drill down and get more specific information, maybe around a custom field like event type as an example i can go in and i can create a chart or a report that can be added to this dashboard so i'm going to go and add that chart and i have a few options i can have a bar chart stacked bar a grouped bar chart as well um, burn up lollipop number you can do so many different things i'm actually going to do a donut because uh, i really like that one here and so you can group them by custom field like i said so in this case we have event type okay and then we can see the task count by event type or we can see the cost associated to that event type as well so you can also uh, name these um, total task by event type is a great title and if I didn't type this, it would have just saved that there. And then we can go and we can add that report. Another thing you can do at the global level is you can go, again, you have to be on at least advanced for this, but you can go to reporting and now you can assign reports um, to dashboards that consider work across the entire organization. So rather than just focusing on information inside of one project, you can go and you can look at projects across the whole organization. You can look at a specific team as well. If I just want to see um, projects on one team, uh, if I just want to see portfolios that I've created. So those projects there, if I wanted to see information just pertaining to that, I could come in here and do that as well. And so that's really the difference between dashboards and reports. You can create a dashboard that has um, multiple charts on it, right? And like the rule builder, Asana has given us some, some quick start charts here to help us out. So you can have various reports and charts, but when you put them all together, they create what is essentially a dashboard. And the last term that I'm going to walk you through and give you a quick overview on are goals. And so goals within Asana are categorized by objectives and key results. So you can have goal templates, you can have goals that are for the entire company, you can have goals that are specific to teams, and then there's even a space where you can have your own goals, where any goal that you are assigned to, it comes up here so you can know exactly what you are responsible for at the end of the quarter or at the end of the year. So with your goals, you're able to come in, you can add a goal as an objective. So make more money <laughs> this quarter. I don't know. There we go. So uh, we can assign a time frame for that as well. So if this is a FY24 goal, if we want to achieve this in um, the last quarter of this year, we can do that. We can add members who may want to have access to collaborate and comment on this goal. And then when we come in, um, we can create status updates. We can choose how we measure the progress of this goal by adding sub goals where you can create a new goal or you can add an existing goal. And what's nice is if you do add a <clears throat> sub goal for a second, then you can connect various sub goals. You can change that parent goal and then you can decide on how you're actually going to measure um, that goal, whether you're going to use sub goals and the completion of those sub goals to ladder up to the completion. You can add projects in where within the projects, if tasks or milestones are completed, you can track progress that way automatically. Tasks, again, you can add individual tasks to your goals or key results. And as those are completed at from various spaces around your Asana instance, um, you can have that ladder up to an automatic completion. And then you can set reminders for yourself or enter something in manually. So there's there's lots to do here, but I really hope that you found this helpful. There's so much to uncover uh, on the Asana platform. And so this is just an overview of some of the common terms that often get mixed up. But if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment, feel free to reach out. If you and your team need training as well, feel free to connect.
connect with me, book a call, fill out our contact us form. We've got lots of options for you regarding Asana training so that you and your team can understand the best ways to utilize the tool for your team. But that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.